everybody. Uh, welcome to my floss tube. My name is Amy. I'm Fiber Arts Amy here and on Instagram. Um, today I'm going to um, do a normal <laughs> floss tube. The last couple that I've filmed have been um, like stash dive videos that have been very long. Um, I'm gonna say I think today's film or video is going to be um, relatively short. Um, I'm just going to go through the whips I've been working on and I've actually been relatively consistent. Um, I haven't touched too many different things um, but I'll show you what I have worked on and um, I also am going to show you my Chatelaine stash um, which won't take long. It's not that much. Um, I don't think. <laughs> Certainly not compared to the Marabilia's. Um, so, well, I'll talk about that when, when I get to the Chatelaine stash. So anyway, I'm going to dive in and show you what I've been working on. Um, one thing, I actually brought this home with me so I could put it in a floss tube. One thing I, oh, I don't want to show you the chart. One thing I've been working on, or I worked on a bit when I went to our cabin. This is a piece I usually only work on at, at our cabin. Um, and I'll take it back to our cabin the next time we go. Um, this is Teresa Wensler's, what's it called? Trade Winds. Um, it's lots of fun. I love the, the mermaids and the dolphins. They're just, they're so pretty. Um, and I need to have Teresa Wensler's to work on there too. So, where am I? Oh, upside down. And there's some strands of floss hanging. Um, I know I've mentioned before, I really like putting in like the outlines of a Teresa Wensler um, and kind of getting the skeleton of it put together. So I did some of that. I worked, and I worked on it this time. I don't know if I've shown this before, but I worked over in this area and I started putting in the letters here. Um, so yeah, that's Trade Winds. It doesn't get a lot of, it doesn't get touched too often because I do keep it at my cabin. Um, I don't have any, like, I don't feel any pressing need to finish it, but um, it gives me something I really enjoy to work on while we're at our cabin and eventually one day it'll be done. Um, while we're talking about Teresa Wensler's, I've been working, a lot of my stitching time has been going to this, to Princess and the Dragon. Um, I've been working on this pretty consistently. I actually think I'm taking this week off from it, or at least mostly off. Just want to take a little break. Just a little break, but I'm pleased with how it's coming along. Um, I do have, I'm sorry, I have floss dangling from this one too. Just trying to get my needle in place, trying to get it out of the way. But this is how Princess and Dragon is looking. Um, I did a lot down here in the tail. I did some in the dress and through here. And then I also, I'm not sure when you guys saw it last, but I'm almost done with the castle. The castle's almost ready for back stitching. And I've done a bunch, I did more in like the bushes and the hills. Actually, it looks, I feel like it looks better in the viewfinder. Do you guys do that like when you've been working on something you're so used to like looking at it one tiny speck at a time that sometimes it helps to like take a picture or film a floss tube and you get kind of a more of an overview of it and I'm having that experience right now I'm like oh I actually got a lot done <laughs> um, yeah these mountains and the hills and stuff I did a lot in there and some more in the, the dragon and his neck and all, all of this I've done. I don't think I've done the border at all. The border is just all shades of green. And then it's like five, four or five maybe shades of green. And then beads that go on last. So I might save a lot of the border till the last. I don't know. But I'm very happy with how it's coming along. Of course, I'm like, I'm almost done. I'm, I'm not almost done. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I am making really good progress. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, 
I, I really want to have it done this year. I feel like I should be able to have it done early this year, like not pushing to the last minute, like maybe summerish or something. That would be really nice if I could get it done. Because once summer hits, um, my kids are home from school and that will make it a little bit harder to work on. We'll see. Um, And I also worked on, let me, oh, I don't have the cover photo. I worked on Damask Roses. I need to find something I can put behind it. Worked on Damask Roses. I'm not going to take it out of the Q-snaps, um, but I, I haven't moved the Q-snaps. Um, I did a bunch of her hair and the roses, and I did part of the dress here. So I'm still working on getting her, like, her head. I want to get kind of, like, this part complete before I move the Q-snaps. Um, I haven't worked on her in a couple of weeks. Maybe I should keep her out and work on her. But I, um, yeah, I want to get, get some more of this part of her done so I can move back to her dress. I love working on her, would like to get her done soon. She's one of my favorites. Um, she's one of my absolute favorite Maribelias. She's just so stunning. I am doing a conversion on her, so hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll turn out okay. Stuff all around me. Um, let's see what's next. I worked on Moonlight Lullaby, which I need to put something behind again. Worked on Moonlight Lullaby. This is the piece I'm doing for my um, mother-in-law as a birth sampler for my daughter, um, and I got a lot done. Um, I finally dove in and did a bunch of the white on the wings. Um, I had been kind of avoiding that white, not so much because I hate stitching white. I know a lot of people do. It wasn't really that. It's just um, it's a rel it's just relatively finicky. There's like three three or four shades of like whitish gray that go in between the like feathers of the wings, and so it's a lot of like confetti and finicky counting. I just wasn't in the mood. Um, I do want to get, oh, I did like the stars up here. I do want to get this kind of top part done so that I can, other than the beads, so that I can um, roll this down on the, the cue snap or on the scroll frame. And then I have more like large blocks of color for the dress that I can do. Did the pink over here. I, I mean, once I, now that I've gotten so many of the colors in, it's just such a colorful piece with like the blue greens and the purples, pinks, yellows. That's fun to work on. Yeah, this is gonna be a short video. <laughs> it's gonna be short. Uh, what else? Um, I, oh, it probably won't be short. I just, it'll be short. <laughs> you guys already know, because you can see how long it is. I have no idea. Um, I also picked up Elizabeth and started working on her some more. I hadn't touched her in a while. So this is the piece that I am using to practice my sewing method stitching. So I stitch all the ways. I, it depends on what I'm stitching. Teresa Wensler's, I always do an acute snap, one-handed poke and stab. It's slow, but I feel like it needs to be slow for me because there's just so much counting and so much like having to make sure you're doing the right stitch with the right blend in the right place. And I'm, I'm fine with slow for a Teresa Wensler. Um, I don't want my hands moving faster than my brain. <laughs> I can read the chart. I'm just going to have problems. Um, Mirabilia's, sometimes I stitch in a Q-snap one-handed poke and stab. Sometimes um, I use a scroll frame and we'll do two-handed and that's fine. Um, when I stitch with one strand, if I'm doing a smaller primitive piece, I almost always use the sewing method. It looks fine and it's super fast um, compared to the other methods of stitching. Um, but I don't like the way my stitching looks with two strands using the sewing method. So I had started stitching Elizabeth ages ago um, to practice, hoping that, I mean, Elizabeth's huge. 
this dress, this dress is enormous. That's a lot. But I thought, um, I thought that's what would make her really good to practice on. Like if I can finish Elizabeth doing the sewing method, by then hopefully I'll have my exes worked out. I'm, I think I'm coming to the realization though, I'm not sure my exes are ever gonna look as good sewing method as they do poke and stab, either one-handed or two-handed. Um, and I might just need to live with that. I also think like, no one's gonna tell the, be able to tell the difference from a few feet away. Like once this is hung up on a wall, the light is so weird in here. I'm sorry, my phone's dinging too. Um, once this is hanging up on a wall, oh, it's so wrinkly. Once this is hanging up on a wall, certainly, no one's gonna know, but I know. <laughs> it bothers me while I'm doing it. So this down here is the bottom of her dress. And part of the reason, I mean, I don't mind counting all over the place on things, but like this is her torso up here. And this is like the top band of her dress. This is the chair or whatever thing she's sitting on. Um, part of the reason I jumped all over with this is because I started up here, because I generally work top down, generally. Um, but as I was doing this because of the way I ended up finding, I like to form my X's, um, I, I ended up feeling like actually working bottom up was giving me, gives me better X's. So I ended up then after working some up here, I moved to the bottom and, and started working kind of bottom up ish. Um, and then I had a string up here that, uh, I still need to finish. So I just went back to start finishing that. But, um, I don't like I look at parts of it and I'm like yeah that looks fine and I look at other parts and I'm like eh, it doesn't look fine I mean my X's just are not as neat I'll try to show you close up but I don't know how well I'll do my X's are absolutely not as neat as they are um, when I'm stitching poke and stab um, it's not that they're bad, but they're not what I'm used to. And if I was getting this effect, poke and stab, I would know exactly how to fix it and it would be fine. Um, I think if I want to be able to stitch a Mirabilia sewing method, which I kind of do, um, I think I might just need to kind of let go <laughs> of that expectation of what my exes are going to look like um, and like be willing to live with it. And I think there's, like, I just, just knowing me, I think there's some pieces that I would be willing to do poke and stab and deal with messier X's. Um, but there's other pieces I think if I, that I care more about or mean more to me or more meaningful to me that I would definitely still do poke and stab just to get those neater X's. I would never stitch a Teresa Wensler sewing method. Um, because of those blends, it's like, it's just so important to have both strands showing. Um, I, I think I, for me, I would need to do poke and stab in order to get my X's neat enough that you're getting that nice, beautiful, even coverage that makes it look so much like a tapestry that I love. So anyway, I am practicing that and it's addictive. I don't know when I took this out the other day and started doing it, I, it like sucked me right in and I don't wanna stop. <laughs> I just want to keep doing it. Um, I'm part of um, Pam at Stitching in the Land of Good Enough is um, uh, doing like a fancy lady get together, which I think is closed now. Um, but it's, it's, we meet on one Thursday a month. I just have thread hanging everywhere in these. This one's not even like an anchored in yet. Um, so I've been stitching, I don't have a cover photo, but I've been stitching Joan Elliott's, um, Sleeping Beauty. Um, I've been doing this in hand, but poke and stab in hand. Um, I thought like older I get, the lazier I'm getting. Like the idea of having to get off my butt and go find a Q-snap to put this in is like, ugh, I don't want to do that. Just start stitching. <laughs> 
and I'm getting better at stitching in hand. Um, I mean, my tension, everything. I like the way it looks. The tension looks good. Um, I'm getting used to it. So anyway, this, I haven't done that much, but this is two. I've only worked on this during our meetups. So this is like two evenings worth of chatting and stitching and I'm pretty happy with it. It seems like a lot to me, at least based on, on how I usually do. I've got more of this green here on my needle. Clearly I was intending to do more of that. So still a long ways to go, but it's my first, I think it's my first Joan Elliott. I've started one or two others, but like I don't think you can put like a full strand in. So I'm gonna say this is like my first real Joan Elliott. Um, I also started barely, I went on like a kit buying spree during the pandemic. I, I actually had, I used to have almost like a negative view of kits. I don't know. And I've always had some, like I've bought some and I've stitched kits before. But I think the kits I was aware of was like a pretty narrow sampling of the kits that are actually out there. And during the pandemic, I think I've become much more aware of like the enormous variety of kits and kit manufacturers and, and things that you can get. So um, I, it's been exciting to, to, to delve into more kits. Um, so I started this, this is, the, this is from Lenarta, Lenart, Lenarta. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. I don't think, I don't know that anyone else does either because I have hear people say it both ways. Um, this is from the Romance Collection. It's called Horse and Flowers. I just love this. I love the soft look of it. I think it's beautiful. Um, I rode horses as a child and my son and I, um, my middle child and I about a year ago started riding together. So um, yeah, we, uh, We've been enjoying enjoying being at the stables together, and I, I've always loved horses, so I've never owned one or anything. I'm not that knowledgeable, but I've spent years around them and riding them and enjoying their company. So I saw this and just thought it was beautiful. Um, and I went ahead and started it. This came with, I think I've heard people say this before, the Lenarta charts are enormous. like. If you have vision problems and like have a hard time seeing, like a, reading a chart because they're too small or indecipherable, try a Lenarta chart. <laughs> they're huge, um, like way bigger than the actual design or pattern is. Um, so this came, I can show you how the, I think I retied the floss so it was more secure. But this came with two of these floss cards and then it also came, a lot of this is like white, I think half stitch in the background, came with this anchor like rayon, super slippery, oh, super slippery, but it's also very optically white. I don't really want to stitch that much with this. I think it's just going to be unpleasant. So I ordered, it's in here somewhere, and when I find it, I'll show you. I don't know that it's what I'm going to end up doing. I ordered some NPIs in white, but they're take it out of the plastic. They're really not the same color, like at all. I mean, the NPI is like definitely cream when held next to this, um, and I'm not really sure. Like, I'm worried it won't be distinct enough against some of the other colors. It might be. Well, I guess it might be. Because this is, like, the closest. So maybe it will be. Anyway, silk, you know, rayon is often meant to mimic silk. So I was like, well, I, mean, I might order a silk and see if that, see if I can try that. I don't know. Maybe I will use it. I might put some stitches in and see how it looks. I think my other option... I don't know if there's other silks that are more white than MPI white. If you know, please tell me. Um, I could always just use B5200, which is way whiter 
than any of the other shades. Like I said, this is kind of the next whitest. It's like a yellowy shade. And this is like a tan. So it's definitely, dis the MPI is definitely distinct and noticeably different than those. I don't know. I don't know what I should do. I haven't gotten very far on this. Some I love starting kits. I love opening the package and organizing the floss <laughs> and putting it all together and seeing the fabric. And sometimes I substitute the fabric, sometimes I don't. Um, in this case, I did not. What is this? I think this is a Monaco. This might be a, it might be a Lugana or something. I really got almost nowhere on this. And I believe I started doing this. I don't know if I started doing a sew. No, I did not do a sewing method. I was doing this poke and stab in hand. Literally, I have like four and a half stitches in. <laughs> I can't even see it. Um, I started this one afternoon. I know there was like, I think I'd been working on Moonlight Lullaby all day. It was on a weekend and like I was tired and I still wanted to stitch but didn't really have the energy to keep doing Moonlight Lullaby behind the stand and everything. And I was just like in that like, I want a kit. I want to play with the floss and open it up and get started. This is a very pathetic start. But in my world, this is a start. I've had people say, I've heard people say, it doesn't count unless you have 100 stitches in or like something like that. Uh-uh. For me, if the thread has gone through the fabric, that's a start. Because that is no longer new fabric. That is used fabric at that point. Um, if it has actually had thread go through it or floss go through it. So that's a start. Um, it's not a priority for me, but uh, it'll be fun to work on. Um, I have a picture on my iPad to show you this other one. This is what I've been doing, I think, the last couple weeks for Mira Monday stitching, which is a hashtag started by um, Lisa at Cross by Floss. Do, do other people go brain dead as soon as the camera turns on? I feel like it's that, like, all, it's like when your boss is watching and all knowledge just goes out of your brain. It's like that. Anyway, this is, um, so this is what Fairy Roses is supposed to look like. I, I actually have her started twice. Um, because I do want to do her, I ended up deciding I do want to do her looking like that. But, I've started her converted. So, and this is the one I, I'll do first. Um, or complete first. So this, it's great how a Marabilia pattern fits right behind the 11 by 11 Q snap. <laughs> Let me just pop it there. You guys can see more easily. Um, so I, what I want to do for this conversion, um, I'm leaving like her, her head alone, but I'm doing, and I'm leaving the roses alone. So she has those yellow yellow roses but what I'm doing is doing her I, I want the wings to all be green basically um, in the original she's got like three different colors that are like green at the top and blue in the middle and yellow at the bottom and she's got that pink dress I'm making her dress those shades of blue I think the yellow roses and the yellow roses pop on the pink too but I do think the yellow roses will really pop on that like dark tealy blue dress um, and then I'm making the wings these green shades all the way down and I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do there's two shades of Krynik that go in the wings um, and I haven't decided what I'm gonna do there yet I might bring some pinks and or yellows in there I'm not sure I kind of I just want to do all the DMC stitching first and then I don't know see how it looks see what I want to do I have a pretty big stash of Krynik um, I just do. <laughs> I have lots of leftovers. Um, lots of leftovers. I also have some Overa Swa metallic that I ordered. I just have a couple colors. I think I have two spools of each of the colors I ordered. 
I might try that on here. I'm not sure. Um, I want to see if it's better than Krynik. Um, or even Petite Treasure Braid. I'm interested. I've heard really good reviews of the Yovera Soie Metallic. But it's relatively hard to find. I don't even remember where I got it from. But I bought it to try. And I was thinking maybe this will be a good piece to try. I've been like obsessed with this one. This is why I haven't been working on other things. Um, especially the last week or so. I feel like I haven't had tons of stitching time. But when I have, I've been doing these wings. I've gotten, I mean, I, some of this was already done before I picked, like two years ago or something. But um, I've gotten a lot of this done just in the last like four or five days, which for me is a lot. Um, I worked on the dress some too. So, Fairy Roses, I'm enjoying her. Um, okay, I'm gonna do Chatelaine's last. So I want to talk about them. Um, so let's talk about full coverage. <laughs> Sit back. Make sure you have a beverage, something to re relax with, some stitching in your lap. This could take a while. Um, my relationship with full coverage. And I'm not talking about like dimensions full coverage. I've done some like I've done some dimensions full coverage, especially like dimensions petites. I have kits that are full coverage those smaller kits that to me is a different it isn't always but for generally for me that's a different category of stitching than like a hate I'm gonna get comfortable too I'm gonna tuck my feet up pardon me while I pull you closer you good okay I'm gonna get comfortable just like my dog is all right so So anyway, sorry you're wobbling a little, that'll stop in a moment. Um, yeah, so Hades. Um, to me, like Hade, there's so many companies that do it right now, right? But Hade like things where an, a piece of art has been converted to a piece of cross stitch and it's now anywhere from like 200 by 300 stitches to like 700 by 900 right there's like a huge variety I have started some before and they've been abandoned basically before they've been started um for a number of reasons I mean the first time I bought a Hade and I haven't bought many of them and I but I have downloaded several of their free charts over the years the first time I bought a Hade was more than a dozen years ago. I think I made a couple of mistakes. I think one, probably a dozen years ago, I didn't understand exactly or hadn't even realized there was a difference between a picture I thought was beautiful and a picture that I actually would stay motivated to stitch. Like there's a different, like there's some pictures I see and I love, but I should buy the print. <laughs> and then there's others that I know will, you know, are more likely to grab my attention and keep me going and keep me stitching. Um, so a dozen or so years ago when I first bought a hate, there wasn't, I don't believe floss tube. I certainly wasn't aware of it. If it was around, um, wasn't watching it. Um, I'm a relatively new convert to floss tube, only started watching around the start of the pandemic. Um, I should say today is March 15th, <laughs> 2022. Um, so I've only been watching for a couple of years. Um, and I, I'm not a Facebook user. I like occasionally go on there if I'm looking for a specific piece of information but I'm not really a Facebook user. So I know there's like groups that talk about paids and all that, and I'm just not really a part of that. Um, so I didn't necessarily have like good advice or like a support system <laughs> for stitching a hate. But um, the other thing is that as time went on and I was seeing people's finishes in like, seeing like going online and seeing images and like blogs and people are working on them 
I started to develop the for me the idea that I don't like how some haze end up looking and it's very hit or miss um, and it's not just haze I'm not trying to like you know, bash on, on that company or anything. Um, I know there's other companies out there, but hate is the one I'm most familiar with. Sometimes I see somebody's whip and it's stunning, like drop dead beautiful. And other times I see them and I feel like the conversion just wasn't good. That, that, that you get that fuzzy look to them that like, um, like not quite in focus. And, and I feel like if a human, if it weren't just a computer, if a human were actually going in and, and obviously that would weigh up the costs, but if a human were going in and tightening up the edges to figures and making it so you didn't get that haziness, um, I don't know if I'm making any sense to you guys, but I feel like those images could look a lot better. And like I said, I feel for me, my impression of the, the whips has been very hit or miss. Some of them, I love the way they look, and others, I really don't love the way they look. And I do not want to put in Lord knows how many hours before discovering, oh, this is one that doesn't look good for me, that I, that I don't want to be doing. Um, and so I've always kind of been on the lookout for, like, if I see someone do one that I love and it looks good, that's the one I'll buy. But honestly, I just haven't seen that. I've seen some that look amazing, but they're not designs I would be motivated to finish. So that doesn't help me. Um, so I'm like interested in trying full coverage, especially like I feel like I'm close enough. I've done a good enough job over the last year or so of sticking with working on Teresa Wensler's consistently that I have a lot more confidence in my ability to actually stick with something and finish it. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but I do, like I feel much more confident that I can stick with something for years and actually finish the project. Um, so for a while I've been feeling like a wish to work on a full coverage, like a Hade type full coverage, but also really not wanting to buy a Hade. I have a few Hades. I don't know if I'm gonna stitch them. Anyway, um, so enter Stitch and Mommy. Stitch and Mommy introduced me I mean, me, she talks about it on her floss tubes to all of us, not just me. But Sarah talks about um, Golden Kite. And Golden Kite, the, so Golden Kite, that the, when you're buying, so like with Hayden, and I think a lot of companies, when you're buying a chart, the, the cover picture is the artwork. On, with Golden Kite, the picture you're clicking on is actually the stitched piece or, or a mock-up of the stitched piece. So you see how pixelated it is. And if you go to Golden, Golden Kite's website, some of their artworks you can buy to different like levels of complexity. So you can buy some, like they might have an art piece that you can buy as 400 by 600 stitches or you can buy it as 350 by 500, or you can buy it as 150 by 250 or whatever. I'm sure those ratios aren't right. But you can click and see how pixelated each of those looks. And you can really zoom in and get like a really good idea of how your finished stitched piece will look. And so I feel so much more confident about buying a golden kite because I feel like I actually have a good idea of what the finished piece is going to look like. And so I'm much more willing to like risk my time, you know, into it. Um, and I've been watching Sarah and other people stitch these beautiful full coverage pieces for years and I'm seeing people finishing them. And um, anyway, it's made me want to join in. So I've been haunting Golden Kite's website for months, just like, looking and, and, and trying to figure out not just like pictures I like but like so I know something needs to be relatively colorful 
I think in, in like cheerful colors for me to st I'm not going to stitch something that has like a brown and white background where you know 60% of the piece is just brown background I might love the painting but I'm not going to want to stitch it so I've been perusing Golden Kite's website for a long time trying to decide what I might actually be willing to stitch and I actually because they do this thing I don't know if it's always going on but like if you buy three you get 30 three or more you get like 30 percent off so I bought several but the one that I have started and I have no idea what I'm doing so if you have really good advice feel free <laughs> to drop it below and tell me what you think um, so the one I've started is still life of roses and strawberries um, I feel like this is a piece that I'm going to really enjoy stitching um, they're just colors that I'll enjoy and that I, I feel like I'll enjoy seeing this piece come to life. Um, it's like, I'm, I, I'm not an art major, so I apologize if I'm using the incorrect language here, but it's kind of like impressionistic enough that I feel like it does, it can be a little bit hazy and it'll still be fine. Um, but I just think it's beautiful and I'd love to actually see it hanging on my wall. So I think I'd be motivated to stick with this for several years. So I started this one and I don't have very much done, but this was also like addictive. Oh my goodness. I mean, I started and like could not stop. Um, this is kind of, this is pathetic, but <laughs> there's not much done. So I, I'm trying to do like, stitch a mommy's typewriter method sort of so I started in the top left corner and again I don't mind counting and I am using pattern keeper I do not want I, I'm a paper copy person I love paper copies I'm not going to abandon my paper charts I think ever I love them but for this I will gladly use pattern keeper <laughs> and I do have an Android device um, I have like a Barnes and Noble nook that I can use for this. So anyway, I have Pattern Keeper, um, which I'm not a stitch counter either. I like, I've been watching all of you count stitches for years being like, why are you counting your stitches? Doesn't that just take away stitching time? <laughs> I don't get it. Why would you count your stitches? I'm still not going to count my stitches, but seeing Pattern Keeper count my stitches for me, that's addictive. That's dangerous because <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it, keep, see it keep going. But anyway, so here's where I am so far. Obviously, just lots and lots of greens that I've stitched and, you know, down here. Now, here's the part that, here's all the stuff I don't know what I'm doing. Well, here's some of the stuff that I, here are the things that I know I don't know what I'm talking about for. I started this, so I know if, I've heard people say off-white's better color than white usually because, the, like, the darker colors, the white won't show through. This is 28 count Monaco, two over one half stitches. I also know if I'm gonna do this, I am a half stitch person. That many stitches, I don't need to double it by doing four stitches. And I know I need to use two strands because it's a golden kite, so there's lots of blends. So I'm doing two over one half stitches. Um, I hope I'm doing this right. Now I know some people do that on 25 count, I just didn't have any 25 count in the house. And once I bought the golden kite, that sucker was gonna get started. Um, yeah, so that's what I started it on. I hope it's not gonna be too thick. I just don't know what I'm doing. I hope I'm doing this okay. Um, the other problem I ran into was how to start a thread. So like before you have enough stitched, to be able to anchor the thread was how to start the thread, which is why I have, I'm basically using, this is like waist knot method, but I didn't put the knot in. The threads are just hanging out there. Um, those I'll, I'll pull to the back once they're anchored a little bit better. So I just basically went in from the top and then started stitching so that my stitching will go over those threads in the back. My back's a mess. Obviously, I traveled all the way down. Don't care. My tension's loose enough. I'm just doing this in hands. 
which is very comfortable. It's just so addictive watching, get like checking off those stitches on Pattern Keeper. And I don't even know if I'm like using Pattern Keeper right. Like I'm so new to this. But it's really fun and really addictive. And I have several more golden kites waiting to be started. And this is actually what I think, um, now I said I, I thought I was gonna take a little bit of a break this week from um, Teresa Wensler. I think this this is, I have a really hard week this week. Like I didn't get almost any stitching time yesterday. We just have a lot going on with kids and doctor's appointments and dentist appointments. There's just like a lot this week and like school activities and things. So I'm not likely to get much stitching. Um, so I just think maybe this is a good week to just not even try with a Teresa Wensler and maybe pick this up instead. And I'm actually really surprised, happily surprised at how easy it is to pick this up with Pattern Keeper and just like jump back in. So, oh, the other thing, so I don't know if using doing two over one half stitches on 28 count is a good idea or a bad idea or probably people would disagree on whether it's good or bad. I don't know. I've been watching people, especially Sarah Stitch -a Mommy, for years. <laughs> They hold up their pieces and they say, this is like two over one and blah, blah, blah. And, blah. and like, because I wasn't stitching anything full coverage, I think it didn't quite register <laughs> or like sink in enough. So when I, you might be able to hear my husband, I'm sorry. He's teaching a class in the other room <laughs> um, uh, over Zoom. So when I went to start this, I was like, what have they said? about <laughs> like I need a, a like an organizer I need somebody to be like here's some examples of this and this and this somebody probably has done that and I just not remembering um, the other thing that I did so when I wanted to start this I wanted to start it I didn't want to be waiting around um, you know to have to, I didn't want to have to go to the store or whatever I also didn't want to, um, I think I have the floss list printed. Yeah, so here's the floss list. Wait. So these are the solid color stitches. And then the blends. There and there. So like four pages of symbols. Um, but a lot of the a lot of the colors that appear in blends also call also are there for solid color stitching. Um, I didn't want to have to go like to Michaels and and buy all of this floss. Um, I don't have a great instinct for like how many stitches. I know you can look it up online, but you know, like I look at a Mirabilia, I can be like, you might need two skeins of such and such a color or whatever, right? Like you can kind of tell. I don't know, when you've, you know, done enough of them or read an, at least kitted enough of them up, you, you get an idea of, like, when you might need more skeins. And this even tells you, like, I think it, well, Pattern Keeper will tell you how many stitches of each you have, but I have far less instinct for, like, how much of a skein you actually need or how many skeins. So I decided... Okay, this is like, might be a horrible idea. I don't know. And I know everyone has their own system and different systems, and I'm sure I will learn as I go on what works for me. But what I did, at least to get started, was I took like the first dozen or so, because I am, there's probably more than a dozen here. Um, I'm trying to use Stitch and Mommy's like typewriter method. Not like necessarily as like a hard rule, but like as a general guide to decide what I'm doing next. So what I did was I made a floss card for each of the first, it's probably like 15 or so, symbols. So I wrote the symbol and then if it's a blend, which almost all of these are, I pulled a length. So the length of thread that I would use on in a blend is different than the length of thread I use for a solid color because I use a loop start if I'm doing solid color stitching. And so my thread's twice as long. So I cut just, I went into my stash because I have a master set of DMC and I just cut, look at all these greens. They're just like, 
greens and like beigey greens. That's all it is so far. Um, I went and cut the correct length. So even let either the full length for a solid color or half, what for me is half of a length for um, a blended color. And I just put together a floss card for the first several symbols as you like move across the top row. Um, and so far this is working. I'm, it might get unwieldy. I, I maybe, I think as I'm stitching, like as I work through, um, it's possible I might find the need as I get more done. I'm thinking I might end up wanting to color complete, maybe to go back to some of these earlier symbols and complete that color. Cause I don't know that I'm going to want more than, I may mean, still have lots of empty cards. I think I have like 40 floss tags here. I don't know that I'm going to want more than 40 cards like going at a time. So I may end up wanting to like, like I said, go back to the beginning and maybe color complete some of them and then like reassign that card to the next symbol. Um, I'm not sure. At the rate this is going, I might not have to decide for another decade. I don't know, but so far this is really, really fun. Um, I just think it's beautiful. I'm gonna show you my mock-up again. And I just feel so much better using Golden Kite. Obviously I haven't finished one, so you know, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But um, I just feel so much better stitching one, knowing that this is a mock-up of a stitched piece and not the original artwork. I feel much more confident I'm gonna end up liking how it looks. So anyway, that was my, I have officially started a full coverage piece that I think I'm actually going to stick with. That was kind of big news around here. Okay, I'm gonna have to scooch forward again, which means I'm gonna have to scooch you back, sorry. Sorry I'm moving around so much. Okay, so the other big thing that happened last week actually is that um, Maggie, who's Kitchy Whips on Instagram, um, she and I started a Chatelaine, oh my gosh, what was our hashtag? Chatelaine Wednesday? Chatelaine Wednesdays? I think it's Chatelaine Wednesday. Um, I don't want to speak for her, but I at least, she's had a similar experience. I just never touch my Chatelaines. I love Chatelaines. And I never seem to pick them up, or very rarely. Um, they just seem like so untouchable for like any number of reasons, right? Like they're so big. I have mine on these enormous scroll bars. Um, I was trying to pre-wash the fibers for, I, the one I have started is Egypt Mandala Garden. I was trying to pre-wash fibers like I do for Marabilia eventually basically just gave up on it. Too many of these fibers are just never gonna rinse clear. It's, it's just not gonna happen. Um, I haven't like damaged any of the fibers by trying to rinse them. They're all the same color they were before I was washing. They're just, they're not, they're not gonna wash because there's just too much extra dye in them. Um, so that was a pain in the butt. I'm worried about messing it up. It's like a huge investment. It's a huge investment I can't wash because of all these fibers not being color fast, um, it just, it, it just never comes out. It, you know, the kits are so expensive. I don't want to mess them up. I don't want to mess it up because of the expense, but also because of the time involved. I don't want to spend 200 hours on something and then make some sort of irretrievable mistake or like spill something on it or, and it's physically unwieldy. It's huge on these enormous scroll bars. Um, so we decided we need to start actually working on them. They're never going to get done if we don't work on them, right? So Wednesdays, it became it. And please join us. If you have a Chatelaine, either that you've been working on or you just have a, a pattern and you haven't jumped in for one of these same reasons that we tend not to work on ours, please join us. We have, de we have designated Wednesdays as our day to stitch on our Chatelaines doesn't really matter how much or how little it doesn't matter when we finish them the idea is just that on Wednesdays we are putting stitches in our chatelaine we want to remove that like untouchable feeling that they have for us so they can actually start getting some work done and actually be finished someday so this is 
Which way am I going here? This way. This is mine. This is Egypt Mandala Garden. Oh, let me show you the... This is the... These pictures aren't great. I mean, they're just so small. But here's Egypt Mandala Garden. And this is where I am so far. Um, I, so I'm like, I'm looking through my fabric at the camera so I can see what I'm pointing at. Um, there's no way I was going to be somebody who like completes from the center out, right? Um, I put in some of these outline borders a while back, but I, so last Wednesday, which was our first Chatelaine Wednesday, I actually was stoked by how much I got done. I added this color and this color and this color. Um, and I were, I added some more of this border. I added this color up here. I got a ton done. I also worked on this. Um, I worked on this pretty solidly for a few hours and was really, really happy. I decided not to do any more. These are like over one fish in the middle. I decided not to work on those last week. I want to get in some more of the area around those. Um, but I already feel, I don't know, it feels really good to be actually working on it and um, making some progress. And I mean, obviously this is <laughs> still at the beginning, but um, it's still beautiful. It was so fun to work. I worked with four different silks in one day. I never work with that many silks in one day. Um, it was really, really fun. So I've been thinking about chatelaines a lot and um, I was asked to go through my chatelaine stash. Um, which, well, I don't know, I'm going to say it's not huge. Maybe it is, I don't know. Sorry for all the crinkling. I buy the paper copies. I am a paper copy person. I have heard people give very good arguments, I think, about why the computer copy is better, the PDF. I've never been able to get I've followed instructions and it still never worked. I've never been able to get a PDF to print legibly for me. I know you have to like zoom in and stuff. I haven't done this in years, but the first one I bought a PDF of was the fairy flower garden one. And um, because it was fairies, so I obviously was gonna buy it. But it, um, I couldn't get it to work. So if I'm going to buy a PDF, of one of the charts, I have to be resigned to stitching from a device. And that is not my favorite thing to do. I much prefer to have a paper copy. Um, I know that's not for everybody, but I, I like the paper copy. So when possible, I have bought the paper copy of these charts. Oh, I was also going to say, there have been, in all the specific incidents I've encountered, where somebody has said, you have to have the PDF copy because you can only get this information from the PDF. It hasn't actually turned out to be true. And I know, um, like Chatelaine, the business, both, um, is it Martina? Yeah, Martina, when she was with us, and I think her daughter, Ella, have said the paper copy is sufficient. Like the information is there, but you need to read the pattern. And Obviously, I'm not the most experienced Chatelaine stitcher, but I have read through a bunch of the patterns. And in all the specific incidents where I've gone looking for information, it has been there in the chart. You just have to really search for it. So I bought paper charts when possible. I do have a few on PDF that you can't get the, um, or you probably you might be able to find it somewhere, but I wasn't gonna like, go on a huge search for it, right? If it didn't seem readily available as a paper copy, I, I ordered PDF. I just did that with, I think it was Nymph, Nymph Garden, um, which is stunning. That is a design I keep coming back to. And I just ordered the kit um, not too long ago from European Cross Stitch. Um, I do order the kits from European Cross Stitch. They just save me a headache. Um, I'm still waiting on, um, the Sleeping Beauty Castle kit from their last sale. 
I'm just assuming that Gloriana, I guess they've said on their Facebook page that Glorianas are holding things up. Um, so I'm assuming that's just, that's what's happening there. Um, so I've already shown you, I have Egypt Mandala Garden, and that's the one that I have as a whip. I have the Medieval Herb Garden. This might be the only design I have that isn't a mandala. Um, but I love this one. I'm actually considering doing this one with the DMCs. Um, I don't know. We'll see. In general, I'm more likely to just buy the, um, like the, the thread pack and all the MPIs and Gloriana's and everything else. If we're going to spend that, if I'm going to spend that much time, like working on something, I'm, I'm just inclined to, to buy all the materials, the specialty materials. Um, so this is mushroom and fern. Stephanie Webb at Lindy Stitches has stitched this. And it's just so unbelievably stunning. And I think part of what, um, part of what convinced me to get this one, but also that it's worth just going for it and delving in. Because I think, so I'm like worried about making a mistake, right? And stitching something in the wrong, wrong fiber or using the wrong thing for back stitch or doing the stitch wrong. Part of, I think, of what kind of is convincing me to just go for it is watching, if you haven't watched, go back and watch Stephanie Webb. She's got some great videos on her Chatelaine. Um, she made changes. Now, granted, she's a designer. But she did some things a little bit differently, and I, get, I feel like it kind of, I don't know, like gave me permission almost to be like, oh, it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly as charted. Um, I could do things a little bit differently and actually even I was thinking about it last Wednesday when I was working on my Egypt mandala garden because it gives you instructions for like how to do the quarter stitches and everything and I was like eh, I don't want to do that I'm gonna do them the way I do them I like the way I do them so I do them the way I do them um also we've talked about I've talked before about how I usually use my variegated threads as a blended thread instead of doing the one X at a time and, and two strands. And I'm not saying I'm never going to use it with two strands and do the one X at a time, but for what I was working on, the parts I was working on in Egypt, it's right here, um, I wanted to do it the way I do it, with the loop start, where it blends the thread more. Um, so I just went for it. But anyway, if you want to see Mushroom and Fern up close, I strongly recommend going to Lindy Stitches Floss Tube and taking a look. It's stunning. Um, Scotland Mandala, I love. I would very much like to get the kit for. Um, European Cross Stitch, I think, usually does a sale in October and in April. Um, and this is very high on my list for what I'd like to get a kit for. Um, my heritage is from Scotland and Ireland, or at least a large part of it is. Um, I've always wanted to visit Scotland gotten to Ireland but not Scotland um I would love to stitch this very very much um Victorian garden mandala I also would love to get the kit for this one it is just so beautiful those the buildings in those tealy blues and greens mm, I love the ironwork in those gates I can spend hours just browsing Chatelaine's website and European Cross Stitches website. Hawaiian Garden. This is very high on my list of designs to start. It's probably going to be the next one that I start. It's so stunning. And my family is planning on going to Hawaii at some point in the relatively near future. We've never been on a big trip before. And this would be our first big trip as a family. All five of us. So, um... I really want to stitch that. Pomerium, medieval fruit garden. I love things like this. Anything that's like a display of different fruits or herbs or trees or plants, I love those. I'm a sucker for them. So this was definitely going to get purchased. Um, I don't know if that one's ever going to get stitched just because there's so many others kind of on my list before it. Um, Irish mandala, also beautiful right up there with the Scottish one for me. Oh my God, they're just so stunning. Those castles. Oh, need to stitch all the things. Poison Garden Mandala. 
absolutely love. This is right up my alley. That's so cool. Absolutely love it. Herbalarius is probably the highest on my list to stitch of this type that's like, you know, the, the groupings of plants. Or very near the top. Um, Spring Knot Garden, I have kitted up and I couldn't find it. I was looking for this all over my house and could not find it. I was like, I know I have it. And it's in a project bag and I can picture the project bag and why can't I find it? And it finally occurred to me, I took this one to our cabin. <laughs> because I like, you know, I was like, what if I'm at the cabin and I have the urge to stitch a, a chatelaine and I don't have one there. So I kitted this up and took it to the cabin. So that's where it is. And I feel like I'm going to start it the next time I'm at the cabin. Um, Tinctorium is probably the only one above the Herbalarius for me um, in terms of like this type to, um, to stitch. Um, because, so this is the Dyer's Garden. Dye meaning D-Y-E, like adding color to things. Um, and I need to get in here and look at these plants more. But um, I love dyeing and I dye with natural materials. It's my favorite type of dyeing to do. Uh, and so I really want to do this one. And I'll show you the, those that I have a kit for soon. Greek Mandala. I love the idea of using these to like commemorate a place we've been. Um, and my husband and I went on a wonderful trip to Greece. Before we had kids, we, um, we spent eight days in Athens. And we went on some day trips. But um, it just, it was, it was like the trip of a lifetime. Absolutely loved it. So this... I have the kit for and would like to do fairy flower garden so I told you I bought this via the PDF I think when it first came out I don't know if it was like a mystery or I don't know what it was but I had it on PDF or on yeah the PDF couldn't get it to print I could not get it to print in a way that was usable and I remember I don't remember what the directions were but I remember my husband and I going through and trying to follow the directions to print things out and it not working and this was probably like four computers ago. And so eventually I was just like, you know what? I don't even think I have the PDF anymore because of computer problems and issues and stuff. I'm just buying the stinking chart. So I have the paper copy now and I feel much more secure that I'll be able to stitch it. And then this one I love. I love this. I love the little Buddha statues. I love the colors to it and the way they flow. This Japanese moss garden. There's two Japanese gardens. This is the Japanese moss one. Absolutely love it. And then I do have, like I said, the nymph's garden. Um, PDF. I think I have Sleeping Beauty, I want to say, as a PDF. I must, because I know I wouldn't have ordered the kit unless I made sure I had the chart. Um, and then I have a, f I have a few kits. <laughs> I ordered the kit from European Cross Stitch for um, Egypt, Mandala Garden, and that one's now been like broken apart because um, I've, I've gone through it and stuff. Um, and I'm using it, obviously. So I also have the, the kit for the Greek Mandala. This is one of the first kits that I bought. And so some of them, some of them I bought with fabric so it's 32 count Belfast white linen. Um, I, I'm sure I will stitch some of them on the white, but not all of them. Um, if you watched my stash dive video, you saw that I have two one yard cuts of some pale neutrals from um, Color and Cotton that I plan to use for chatelaines. One of them is like a sandy color and I think I'm probably gonna use for the Hawaiian garden one they're all similar sizes so if I don't use this for Greek I can use it for a, a different one I'm not worried about that but I love the way the kits come and I haven't put together the DMC's for these these are just the so the kits from European cross stitch don't include DMC's and she's broken the kits up recently too so that you can buy like the bead pack separately from the floss pack but these are all the specialty materials they come on a ring like this in floss away bags these are all the specialty materials for the Greek Mandala Garden. 
I mean, it's just stunning. There's all these petite treasure braids. There's dinky dyes in here. There's Karen Water Lilies. A lot of Karen Water Lilies. There, what is this? I can't see the tag. The, I don't even know what these are. But they're, oh, Glorianas. There's a bunch of Glorianas in here. Oh my God, so beautiful. Lots of Glorianas. And she includes the like, I think it's the Nymo like beading thread. I, I've, t I've said before, I don't like using that. I will probably use flosses. And then this is the bead pack for the Greek. And I think this is one of the reasons why they're less expensive than like kitting them up yourself because she just sends you like what you need. Somebody's trying to call me. Um, sorry. She just sends you like what you need and probably a few extra. Um, so you don't have to buy like a ton of something if you only need a few beads. So most, so this, this looks a little messy because I've opened it up. I've been into it. I've looked at all the materials and things. Um, when she sends them to you, they're so pretty. They look like this. They're just these neat little bundles. You can see this one's from Mushroom and Fern. Everything, all those flosses are in the floss away bags. And then the bead pack is right there. This has a nice little ribbon on it. So I have the Mushroom and Fern kit. I have the Medieval Cloister Herbalarius. I have Hawaiian Garden, which I got with the fabric. Um, but like I said, I think I may, um, wow, there's so much. I may end up um, using that color in cotton. In general, for chatelaines, I am definitely in the camp of like less is more for the fabric. Um, I really don't want the fabric to compete with the design. Um, not, I'm just, I'm less likely to choose a hand dyed and certainly I'm less likely to choose a really colorful hand dyed. I'm more likely to stick, I think with a, a neutral or sorry, I'm off camera or like neutral ish background. Um, Japanese Zen Garden, which I have no connection to. I've never been to Japan, but I just think it's so stunning and calming and can't wait to work on that design. Tinctorium Garden. This is the Dyer's Garden. These are amazing. Needles. This one has fabric. I don't know if I'll use it. And then Fairy Flower Garden, which I've obviously gotten into. I don't know that I ever actually started it, though. I can never get that stinking pattern to print. But anyway, those are my kits. I have, like I said, I have Sleeping Beauty and Nymph Garden on order. Um, those kits, but no idea. I think I'm going to start another Chatelaine at some point. Sooner rather than later. But um, definitely want to focus on Egypt until I get it done. And it stays on the stretcher bars. I don't take it off. Um, it stays on there. Um, and I don't have that many huge stretcher bars, so, uh, I can't have too many of them going at once unless I do start stitching one in hand, which I don't really want to do because then I'm worried about the fabric discoloring over time. Um, and I can't wash it. So I don't really want that to happen. <sighs> I think that's it. Um, I know some people, I'm going to forget everyone. I know some people have shouted me out recently. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you. I know Needleberry Stitcher. Um, I know that Huga Stitcher has mentioned me. Um, now my mind's blanking. That's really helpful. Um, I know Lisa at Cross by Floss has mentioned me. Um, uh, Memphis Sari E, I think, has mentioned me. Yeah. Um, if I don't like, I should write these things down. I can't believe I didn't think to do that. Um, because if I don't say something about it immediately, all thoughts of it disappear. Um, I did, I, I, I need to pull the, the person who won the pattern of Ophelia has never gotten back to me. So I need to pull a new winner for that. 
um, which I forgot to do before I started today. So I'm gonna pull a new winner for that and I will comment on that person's comment. Um, and the next time I film a floss tube, I'll also mention it. But um, I'll get that done. Hopefully that person will get back to me. Um, I'm not gonna do a giveaway this video, but maybe next video, we will see. Um, and I still have that kit to give away of Princess and the Dragon when I finish that, but I have no idea when that'll actually happen. Um, so thanks guys for, um, hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun. Hope you liked what you saw, what you saw. If you have any questions, please let me know in the box down below. Um, and you can also reach me on Instagram and I guess that's it. Thanks guys. I hope you have a good stitchy day and hopefully I'll see you soon.